maybe I should go like this. Maybe you should do it like this. Just gently though. Flip them over. Okay. Now let's get it in. So hey guys, welcome back to Native Eats. I have a very special show for you today. It is THC gluten-free brownies. And I'm gonna soup them up a little bit today with some toppings, but you certainly don't have to soup them up. You can just go plain Jane if you want. This is my souped up portion. What you will need, okay, for this is your THC oil that you will make from the video that you're going to watch. And so you'll need a batch of that or actually a quarter cup, depending on your moderation. You will also need for your wet ingredients, sugar, eggs, and vanilla and some good oil, some good oil. Next to dry ingredients, you're gonna use tapioca and King Arthur's. Do not change these flowers up and try to get all fancy because I've spent a decade tinkering with these flowers to get them right for you, okay, babes? You will also need some good cocoa powder. You could also use real chocolate squares. And so for flavor, we're gonna add a tiny bit of cinnamon. This is so optional, but I love it. Just a tiny bit. It really, to me, just brings out the richness to chocolate flavor. And you're also gonna need baking soda and baking powder and salt. So okay. what we're gonna do is, this is my souped up version. You certainly do not have to do this, but I am a little bit weird about my walnuts looking pretty. I like my nuts to be pretty. So what I did is I came in here and I turned them all upside down so you can see this pretty little brain and I did them like that so that when the pour mixture goes in and these toast on top, you will be left with, when you flip the brownies over with this, hopefully we'll be left with some pretty little walnut brains on top. So I encourage you to get some like good candy that you have. If you wanna go ahead, you can go with just walnuts, but I'm gonna add some almond rokers that I had around that nobody wants to eat anymore. They will be a good Good, crunchy topping. I'm just gonna beat it up a little bit. And there you have it. So that's our coffee chunks. All on top without moving the walnuts too much because we spread them out so pretty. So this, my friends, is your beautiful topping that makes you a artist. So there's our topping. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna come over to the oven. I'm gonna crank it to 350. Get that going. While that's going, I'm gonna start with the dry ingredients. It's probably gonna be one cup of flour, one cup of cocoa, and one cup of sugar. So it's kind of cool, right? So our dry is gonna be a cup of the King Arthur's, and then I'm gonna go a quarter cup of the tapioca. King Arthur's just on its own is a little cakey. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here to our cocoa. And I'm okay with getting a nice, big, chunky cup of cocoa in there. And then we're gonna go in with some salt. One teaspoon of baking powder. And one teaspoon of baking soda. So again, it's just one one of everything. Now on the cinnamon, which is again optional, but I think I put about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon in here. So, I'm gonna give it a quick little stir. So you're gonna fit it with your mixer, and then you're gonna put in one cup of sugar. I was thinking of quiet. This is our beautiful homemade THC oil. We're gonna go in with a quarter cup of this. And then a quarter cup of your offset oil. Quarter cup of each. And last, we're gonna go in with our eggs. And at this point, I'm just gonna crank the mixer on. Okay, so there we go. We're just gonna get it going. Get everything kind of mixing in there, getting happy. Looking good. A little frothy. Always good to get it nice and frothy. Cream your stuff. And we're gonna go in with a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. Batty, batty stuff. I don't like snorting stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it guys. This is your mixture. It's nice and thick. And then so come on over here and we're gonna this is what your mixture needs to look like. And then, this is the best part, right, of making brownies is the pour. And I'm gonna just get it on, baby. Booka chicka wow wow. So, we are almost ready. And as you guys know, I tried to gently pour this mixture in without disturbing my mixture underneath that I so artfully distributed at the bottom. And 350 is what we're set at. 
So go into the oven at Trace 50. And I'm gonna say to go ahead and start off with 22 minutes and check your brownies. I will see you guys back in two minutes. All right, guys, I think we're ready after a little tweaking of the time. We ended up going all the way to 28 minutes on that instead of two and two. And I'm just gonna check it and they definitely look like they're more ready because they are cracked on the top there a little bit. And then, you know, don't throw your toothpick away. You can either clean it or go the other end. And that looks a little less wet, a little more cakey. And you can see that it's like browning and getting hard on the sides. So 28 minutes and we're gonna let these cool for about 10 to 20 minutes. 20 minutes is better, 30 minutes even better. And we're gonna flip these out and see how our topping came out. I'll see you guys back. All right, we're back to reveal these beautiful brownies. And I have a um, parchment lined cutting board. And you know these are cool. Here we go. I'm just gonna take the plunge and, and um, maybe I should go like this. Maybe I should do it. Just gently though. Flip them over. Okay. No, it's good enough. It's like a gooey. You like a gooey center. That toffee. That melted. We've been cooling for about. Oh. The walnuts taste toasty because we put them at the bottom. And the toffee yeah. is so good inside these brownies. Ooh, you gotta try these. Mm. Serve them with some milk. Remember guys, like, subscribe, and comment. Three little ways to be nice.